So good morning. It's day 10. I've literally just set off from the campsite. I thought to myself, I'll take my time getting ready this morning. But it's still half past nine. Oh dear. You get into these little routines of what to do and when. It's difficult to change them, I suppose. Yeah, so it was foggy when I woke up. But the tent dried off, as you can see, the sun's come out. And a uh, little bit of wind soon dried the tent out. So that's all packed up nice and dry in the bags. And we're off for another nice day in this gorgeous countryside. So as I mentioned in the last one, the uh, scenery is lovely, but uh, there's a lot more ups and downs. And I think it took its toll on me yesterday. So I'm going to take it easy. I mean, we're only doing 40 kilometers per day. What's that, 24 miles? 24, 25 miles a day. I don't intend on doing any more than that. Not at the moment, not whilst we've got these ups and downs. There's no point, not in any rush. It means I can spend longer stopping and looking at things. Oh, that's a bit rough. So yeah, there's still a bit of mist hanging on the hills over there. But I think it's going to be another nice day. There's a chance of rain around lunchtime apparently, but not for long, they're only showers. And hopefully we won't have any rain at all, that would be nice. Right, as always, I'm going to do some miles and then I'll get back with you. The river's dropped quite a bit now, hasn't it? There's still lots of signs up creating little detours for me, uh, saying that the, the water's too high and the path is closed. That's what caused half the problems yesterday. Diversions up roads, I mean, you can see the side over there. If you get diverted away from the side of the river at all, you immediately have to go up on the next road which could be 10 20 meters above you and they're very steep little climbs they're not long but very steep so my campsite last night was terrible it's the worst one i've had by a long way don't get me wrong the staff were nice the pitch was nice but it was within sort of 20 meters of a railway line and there was big industrial trains, like the ones we saw like yesterday, running all night, two, three o'clock in the morning. Sounds like the train's coming right through your tent. And then I was visited by a little rodent in my tent. Didn't actually see it, but I could hear him. 
when I say in my tent, I don't mean in the sleeping compartment bit with me, but just in the undercover bit outside where I store my bags. He was uh, obviously sniffing around for some food or something. But... Yes, yeah, so not very much sleep last night. So we're back to these gorgeous riverside paths at the moment. There's the river. This is lovely. I fancy there's going to be lots of people on the paths today, Sunday and all. We're all out enjoying the sunshine. It's going to be busy. for another water break. Yeah, it doesn't look like water level's fallen very much when you're this close to it, actually. No wonder some of the paths are still closed. So Kamut has just let me down again, I think it's the second time on this tour, so it's not too bad considering how many miles I've done. But it's just led me along that, which is, okay, it's doable, but you then get to the next turn and it wants me to go down there. No, that I am not doing. So I will go back and use a little bit of road and find my way around. I mean that's obviously not the Eurovella 15 so uh, I don't know what Kamut's done with this one. Unless there was a closure in at some point and somebody else has mapped it down there but uh, on a bicycle maybe, on a trike, no way. Right let's go back and find a way. So this one's for my mother. Hello Ma, I've just topped up my sunscreen, is that okay? Have I missed any? Can you see? No? Good. Right, see you later. rather them than me. Sorry, eating a carrot. I'll get back to you in a minute. Mmm.
sorry about that, but I do love baby carrots. So why have I stopped here? Well, over my shoulder there, it's good blend. And I don't know whether you can see the ship. I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't see in the little screen. But just beyond the ship there, in the middle of the river, are some flags. I thought I'd stop here and show it to you because up there is going to be really touristy and a hard place to get the drone out, which I thought I might try and do. I'm not going to fly it all the way up there, obviously, but we'll see what we can see. Just want to start recording and a big train goes past. Boats to the left of me, trains to the right. Here I am stuck in the middle with you. Carrots! <laughs> yes, I'm going to carry on eating my carrots. This is my lunch break. See you in a bit. So that place over there, with all the flags and the big monument, is called German Corner. The monument is a replica of the first one that was put there. It's a symbol of German nationalism. And uh, the Americans and the French had issue issues with the original. And um, now they've got a replica one there, and the Germans say that it's a a symbol of German unity so uh, that's very different then so they can keep this one I guess because it doesn't look nationalistic at all does it some big German Emperor sitting up on a horse with all those regional flags of Germany all posted around him German unity German nationalism you decide I probably should have been the other side today because uh, there's a chairlift and where there's a chairlift there's probably other things to do. You wouldn't get me on a chairlift but that probably means there's more to see and do over there than there is over here which is just a bike path and a railway. Oh well, onwards and upwards. Yeah, okay, so I came into Coblenz anyhow. I couldn't resist. You come all this way and then, just because you're on the wrong side of the river. And we wouldn't have seen this fortress on the other side. That was just above us when I was talking about Coblenz a minute ago. Didn't even know it was there. There's quite some places where the chairlift goes up to. And of course, when you go out your way a little bit, you don't only get decent views. Nom, 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 nom. And there's the big nationalist statue. <laughs> so that's the first different river I've seen all week. That's the Moselle. Just over there it joins on to the Rhine. So there we go, added bonus, we've seen a bit of Coblenz. Gonna make my way back now onto the other side of the river and carry on down towards today's campsite. It's not too far away. What a lovely day. 
less here. So back into some hills. The river's fair funneling through this little gap. Very strong current just in there. So pretty. I don't know how Koblenza ever got permission to put that up here. What an eyesore. Right, I've arrived at my day 10 campsite. I'm the first one here. I'm sure this little space will fill up before long. There's normally three or four others by the end of the evening. What I thought I'd do today though, instead of Tim's tent talk, or testament from the tabernacle, what have we got in it? <laughs> that one still makes me chuckle. Right. Somebody asked to see the trike, so there she is, fully loaded, at the end of a long day. She's a bit dirty. There's not a lot I can do about that, though. Um, so what can we say about the trike, then? They start at the front. As I've already spoken about, we've got that FNEO drive on the front there. Let's get my back to the sun, that's a bit easier. So the FNEO drive on the front, three-speed gearbox. It's got a 25-tooth chain ring. And all the gears are internal. Go away, Mr. Fly, we don't want you in front of the lens. Yeah, so the three gears in that are all internal. Um, what else have I changed on it since we last saw Trini? The tyres, we got rid of the tennis. I've already spoken about that. So we're onto these uh, Marathon Tours. Marathon Tour on the front. And at the back, the Marathon Tour Plus. She's still got the knobbly bits on the side, it's so new. Um, the other new bit that I've got on there is I bought a new seat cover. I think that was last year I got that. The old one's getting got holes in it, so uh, they wear out. There's, you can see where I've got my white cushion behind there. Oh, hopefully you can see behind there in here. I have a white cushion that I um, use. There's a bar that goes across the seat here and it digs into my spine when I sit on the chair so I have this here but at exactly the same point the old seat cover wore out right in the middle there and there's only so many times you can repair it before it uh, just falls to pieces and looks really tatty. Um, don't think there's anything else new. No, I think that's about it. We're going to go through these uh, Ortley panniers at some point. I'll give you a little chat on them, but I'm going to save that for another day. And that's about it. That's Trini, as she is. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else that I haven't discussed about her before. If you guys can think of anything that I need to uh, show you or you'd like to see on the trike, give me a chance and I'll perhaps clean her a little bit and uh, then show you. That had to have been two minutes. Anyway, I'm going to get my tent set up now and uh, relax for a little bit. Right, I'm tired. <clears throat> I'm done for the day. I'm having a beer. That'll do. I'll see you tomorrow. Ta-da.